Well, we're going to be talking about Kafkas and the miracle of the Ofsted inspection, which found them outstanding, and wonder how that could have happened. Um, but before we start, we just wanted to trail uh, a conversation we're going to have about the DAP course, the Domestic Abuse Perpetrators Program that Kafkas runs. Um, we're very interested to hear from anybody who's been on a DAP to hear how it worked. Did they succeed? What did they learn? What did they not learn? What was their overall impression? So we'd be very pleased to hear from anybody. At the end of this this podcast, there's our email address, and that's the way to get in touch with us, and that's admin at myonrecord.com. Uh, but we will be, in fact, having a podcast where we're talking with David Egan about the DAP program, because he's done a lot of work on that and um, is an expert on it. So uh, that's something to look forward to. But meanwhile, we need to talk a bit more about Kafkas and the um, offset inspection. Yes, in, in one of the previous podcasts we did, there was mention of the Ofsted inspection, and I said perhaps it would be a good idea to look into it a bit more. Um, so that's what we're doing. I think I said in that podcast wrongly that there had been a, a prior Kafka's report where they were judged as poor. That isn't in fact the case, and in fact there isn't even a judgment called poor, so I'm sorry about that. But the four overall judgments um, can be outstanding, good, requires improvement, and inadequate. And what we, if we look back a little bit, I think it's always best to get it in context again. We can go back to the Norgrove report, which was 2011. And we saw then that there were concerns about Kafka and the decision with regard to that inquiry was that they weren't able to deal with that. There wasn't something that they uh, would be looking into. But behind the scenes, there was already uh, a lot of concern about the way that Kafkas was operating. We then get to 2020 and we get the Ministry of Justice report and of course we know what that has said and then we can uh, remember Louise Tickle's um, article uh, which was entitled Twisted Priorities Mean Kafkas Has Failed to Protect Children from abusive parents. Which we spent some time on we, we did. previously, didn't we, did. we on the previous podcast. So here, here we go with the, the information about the actual um, inspection. There was one in 2014. Apparently the inspection dates were between the 21st of February and the 21st of March. And on that occasion, the overall judgment was good. That was the one I said, I think that it was poor, but it's good. And um, they had four outcomes. Three were good. And one outstanding. I'm just going to I'm just telling you that because we need to get it into context. That's the previous. That's inspection. the previous one. But now we're going to actually be looking at the most recent one, which is um, 2018, 2nd of February to 2nd of March of the inspection dates. And in this occasion, we get the overall judgment is outstanding. And if you recall, I said my my impression is that. Anthony Douglas was appointed um, transparency review. He All was right. appointed to deal with that. He's on the panel for the transparency yes, and, review. Yes, and I was, yeah. I was suggesting that it was probably because of this outstanding outcome that um, he's being lauded for the improvement that came in um, with Kafka's. So this report is saying that the quality and effectiveness of Kafka's private law practice with families, which we're obviously particularly interested, is good. The quality and effectiveness of Kafka's public law practice with families is good. If you remember, the public law issues are those issues uh, relating to um, applications by local authorities to take children into care. The leadership and governance of the national organisation was judged as outstanding and the leadership and management of local services was judged to be outstanding. So I thought it would be interesting if we just went through the summary of key findings and just think carefully about what they found. And then we're moving on to the sh a short part that covers um, private law proceedings. But this is their explanation of why Kafka's is outstanding. It's because of the following. The first thing, exceptional, aspirational, Corporate and opera operational leaders work relentlessly to ensure 
that children and their families benefit from good or outstanding services. Shared priorities are communicated clearly, listening to children, understanding their world and acting on their views are strongly embedded in practice in both public and private law. This is enhanced by the splendid work carried out by the influential Family Justice Young People's Board. The next one is... Since the last inspection, the Chief Executive, together with the National Service Director and supported by an effective and active board, have worked diligently to develop and support a culture of continuous learning and improvement. Stability of leadership and strong aspirations to get it right for vulnerable children are key factors in their success. The vast majority of Kafka staff at all levels consistently provide excellent quality services for children, their families and the family courts. Kafka's highly evolved and mature strategic relationships with its key family justice partners, those are Her Majesty's Courts and Tribunal Services, the Judiciary and the Association of Directors of Children's Services, have led to create to, sorry have led to creative and innovative services nationally and locally the chief, chief executive and the national service director are held in high regard they work tirelessly driving much needed development and reform to meet the increasing levels of demand that, that's anthony douglas douglas isn't i suppose it? i suppose the chief yeah. executive mm. yeah Kafka's practitioners' effective and authoritative practice adds value and leads to better outcomes for the majority of children. In the vast majority of cases, family court advisors and children's guardians provide the courts with cogent, well-balanced and analytical risk assessments. These help the courts to make child-centred and safe decisions. I'm trying not to laugh. No, no, don't laugh. Strong evidence-based and succinct reports minimise the need for experts. They also reduce delay and the need for further appointments. In a very small number of cases seen, delay in establishing children's views and progressing cases quickly enough are linked to poor case planning. This is a slightly confusing paragraph because it minimises the need for experts, but in fact, Mr Munby during his presidency of the family court, when he took a view from his window, took the view and put across the view that Kafka officers are experts. Yes. So people are still struggling with this concept of well, what do they mean by expert? Well, perhaps they aren't struggling. Perhaps they know they're not really experts. So you minimise the need for experts by appointing, by nominating Kafka officers yeah. as experts. We'll do another. We'll do yeah, a podcast right. on Sorry, that. Sorry, I'm, I'm quibbling. It, this is it, semantics, but it's another. It's another good one, though. Most direct work is well planned, done at the child's pace, and ensures that the child understands what is happening. Reports are enhanced by using the child's own words, resulting in the powerful voice of children informing recommendations to the court. Inspectors observed some highly sensitive, knowledgeable work in relation to a wide range of diversity issues. Performance management is a key priority. A rigorous, strength-based performance framework supports the delivery of good and outstanding services nationally and locally. Key strengths and areas for development, identified accurately in Kafka's self-assessment, are used to inform both management understanding of the quality of practice and individual staff development. Senior managers have clear plans in place to help staff to improve the consistency of performance learning reviews and case planning and to ensure that relevant diversity issues are fully considered. Strong governance arrangements are firmly in place, augmented by a culture of professional accountability and a respectful challenge at every level across the organisation. Kafka has successfully implemented a model of proportionate working to address demand on services. 
Despite having high workloads, staff who spoke to inspectors felt extremely positive about working for an organisation in which they are treated well as professional adults and their views and needs are important and highly valued. The National Business Centre is exceptionally well managed, effective and efficient. This means that Kafka's services for children benefit from the support of a coherent and expertly coordinated range of centralised systems, Business services and social work staff are skilled and committed. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what we've got to worry about. We don't have anything to worry about. Don't, do we? What's the Ministry of Justice fretting about? What are they all fretting June about? Report? Look at this. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better report, really, could you? Well, no. No, no, it's you tremendous. No, it's it's marvellous. So they did have a few areas where they felt Kafka's needed to improve. There were four of them. Further improve the quality of recording and case plans and contact logs to ensure that management direction is explicit and prioritised. Do, do you know what that means? No. No. <laughs> no but it's jolly good. It sounds like a collection of words that's thoroughly constructive yeah. and encouraging. Number two, strengthen the consistency of management recording in performance and learning reviews to ensure that areas for development are clearly articulated and evaluated. That means keep records. Does it? Properly. Right. Consistently. Thanks for the clarification. Fully implement the system to monitor the quality of work when practitioners step down from self-regulating their own work. What? They've been they're self-regulating <coughs> their own work. But they step down from it. Well, when they step down from it. They have to fully implement the system. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Ensure the reports to court consistently explain when issues of a diversity are not relevant to the application. Yeah. And that's in case people think it's been left out then. Yeah. Well. Obviously, it's good though. They obviously, obviously did terribly well. Yeah. But you know, they could improve. Now, let's move down to page seven. It's worth reading all of it, really, but um, I can't read all of it out loud. Go on. <laughs> so, the inspection judgments about Kafka. So this is the heading, the quality and effectiveness of Kafka's private law practice with families is good. Number 11. The quality of work in private law is consistently good with many examples of outstanding practice. Kafka's central <coughs> intake team, based in the NBC, is highly effective. It makes timely and safe screening decisions within 24 hours. Staff understand when to fast-track children's cases and recognise risks that warrant a child protection referral to a local authority. Consequently, children are helped and protected sooner. A dedicated team completes most police national computer checks within two days. All relevant safeguarding information is swiftly provided to early intervention teams to complete work to the first court hearing. 12. Work prior to the first hearing dispute resolution appointment is good. Children are allocated to an FCA without delay. I like that. It's not that the FCA is, is allocated to the children. It's the other way around. So yeah. 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 The local EIT prepares safeguarding letters. Timely initial risk assessments ensure that children's welfare is safeguarded. Most safeguarding letters are informed by evidence-based tools. Most of them. These support the analysis and good advice given to the court. In a very small number, however, the quality needs to improve. A few letters lack analysis and are filed with grammatical mistakes and typos. 13. Interviews with parents to help prepare safeguarding letters are carried out in a respectful manner, providing parents with effective support and clarity. Conversations observed with parents are purposeful. FCAs helpfully identify areas, areas of concern while persistently focusing on the child's needs. Not all safeguarding letters are filed within court set filing dates. This means that a very small number of parents do not see the letters or have the opportunity to reflect on the contents prior to the first hearing. However, the FCAs, as observed by inspectors, are exceptionally skilled negotiators, 
sensitively helping parents focus on the needs of their child while successfully resolving parental disputes and preventing further court involvement. Well, that's tremendous. <laughs> 14. The key decision at the FHDRA is whether CAFCAS needs to do further work to advise the court what order, if any, needs to be made to ensure that the child's needs are met. Inspectors found that the advice provided by FCAs was child-focused and in line with Kafka's principles of proportionate working. When children require a post-first hearing service, work is allocated and most reports are filed with the court in a timely way. Children and their parents and carers receive appropriate advice and support during the proceedings. Inspectors consistently found strong evidence of how children's wishes and feelings are actively sought and how the voice of the child influences future planning. Particular strengths are direct work and engagement with children of varying ages. Children are seen and seen alone when this is in their best interest. 15. Children's experiences are constantly central to the proceedings. FCA's advocate well advocate well on their behalf to produce high quality reports that tell the child's story. There is a strong emphasis on understanding the impact on children. Risks and strengths are carefully analysed. For example, an effective domestic abuse pathway tool that received an MOJ award in 2017, they don't say what it is, assists practitioners to identify levels of risks when presented with conflicting parental accounts in complex family situations. Practitioners are clear about the emotional impact of children when parents are unable to, pri to prioritise their needs. They are confident and well prepared for court at FHDRAs and other hearings. They offer appropriate challenge where necessary. Advice and rec recommendations flow from the analysis in their reports in addition, children are supported to write and meet the judge if they wish. Write to and meet the judge if they wish. This helps the court to reach safe and well-informed decisions in children's best interests. You really do wonder what the fuss is about. Yes. That, um, in the vast majority of children's... So good. It is so good. In the vast majority of children's cases, safeguarding information is sufficiently analysed and informed by the views and assessments of relevant professionals, family members and children... In two cases, inspectors ask senior managers to review missed safeguarding information. Case plans and contact logs could be used more effectively to plan and review what work is required and how it will be carried out. While stronger reports include a sensitive deliberation of children's cultural backgrounds and heritage, more work is needed to ensure that relevant diversity issues are reported on routinely. 17. In the most challenging and complex private law cases, the judge can appoint a children's guardian under Rule 16.4. In these circumstances, a child will also be appointed as solicitor. Kafka has continued to work collaboratively with judges to ensure that only the most complex cases are dealt with in this way. It is trialling new ways of working using a more structured intervention for children and their families in these usually high-conflict cases. This is intended to help parents understand the emotional harm to children when conflict is unresolved and to promote more time, timely case resolution. Early findings from this new approach are promising. Most work in Rule 16.4 appointments is strong. For example, inspectors observe children's guardians in court under cross-examination providing clear, unequivocal, child-focused advice and recommendations. Judges who spoke to inspectors confirm, confirm that the children's guardian's work in these cases is effective in reaching a child centre resolution more quickly. 19. Final paragraph. Kafkas has successfully met its internal and external targets, including all key performance indicators. This is commendable considering the significant ongoing increase in private law work. Some local judges reported that in this time of high demand and reduced resources, it is amazing that Kafka has continued to progress and improve practice. 
Children's cases sampled, tracked and audited during this inspection show that for the majority of children, FCAs add significant value to safeguarding vulnerable children and their families in work for and after the first hearing. Yeah. Mm. Well, it does smack a little bit of um, Haringey, doesn't it? Where things went so well <laughs> before baby P died. And everyone thought that it was going well, didn't they? Everyone thought it was going well. Well, I, I none of this chimes with what we've been hearing. None of this chimes with what we've read about. But it's depressing, isn't it? Because, you, I mean, we had the Norgrove people saying there's problems with Gavcats back in 2011, did you say? Yeah. But they weren't going to deal with it. And then you have the Ministry of Justice with their report in June last year saying it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. This inspection was when? That 2018. 2018. So we've had two years. It's either deteriorated over two years or Ofsted were missing something. But it's... It, 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 at the very least, even if the well, Ministry of Justice No, I, that can't be true, though, can it? Because I think there would have been a, a real decline in the number of people complaining about Kafka's if actually they were working more effect you effectively so. for a period. So, so. I don't think yeah. that that yeah. Yeah. happened, actually. No. But I don't think it's even worth discussing it anymore because, you know, it's kind of obvious that there's a problem with this, with this um, you know, inspection. Yes. Otherwise, what's the fuss about? Well, I mean, if you believe this, you wouldn't think it was necessary to be looking at anything because no. they were well run, yeah. they were organised, yeah. they were yeah. doing it well, there were a few things they had to improve on, and yeah. the, the leadership was so good they would ensure that that was done. And parents felt supported and yes. informed. Yes, absolutely. And have no, nothing to complain about. Yes. And I'm wondering what people who are listening to this must be thinking when they hear it, because it's not the usual thing, is it, for parents to be looking at Ofsted inspections. But I thought it would be interesting to mm. see what inspectors thought of it. And you just wonder what on earth the inspectors were thinking. Mm. Genuinely, presumably, they thought that the service was working well. Mm -hmm. But you, you do have to question what that's based on. Mm. Yeah. And another interesting thing that we found, there was a press release, um, that came out on the 14th of October 2020, where Ofsted were said to be consulting on a new approach to Kafka's inspections. We've launched a new consultation on how we plan to inspect Kafka's from 2021. Stakeholders can give their views until the 11th of November. Um, Ofsted is seeking views on proposals for a more effective and proportionate approach to inspecting the Char Children and Family Court Advisory and Support Service. Launched today, the consultation seeks a range of views from those working with children and families in the family courts. If implemented, the new approach will align Kafka's inspections with Ofsted other inspections of children's social care. It will maintain a high bar while introducing more proportionate inspection in response to Kafka's good performance or continued good performance. So are they so saying they, they only want to hear from people working with families and children? They don't want to hear from the families themselves? I think it's a range of views from those working with children and families. In the, yes. Not, they don't like want it. to hear from the parents or the children. Well, no, because they might not no. hear what they want to hear. Well, that's possible. <laughs> it's possible. Well, I think it's an interesting thing to have done and to, to be doing a podcast on by that's what I mean. Oh dear. And yes. I and I think it does it does make you wonder what on earth is happening because we have different organisations thinking in, in hugely different ways. Yeah. The MOJ has a view, the officers has has a view, people involved in the system have a view. Yeah. And on the whole they are not really the same at all, are they? Well something has happened which has pushed the plight of women who are um, who separated from somebody who's um, a domestic abuser, domestically violent, uh, and who are experiencing this this um, this pattern, which appears to be quite common, of being forced into continued involvement with the abuser mm. and their children being exposed to the uh, consequences of that, um, and that clearly surfaced. And the the Ministry of Justice report is very orientated towards the plight of those women. Yeah. Which I'm absolutely no doubt is is a huge issue. 
um, which the Ofsted inspection clearly didn't identify at all, but it certainly didn't start in the last year or two. Um, I mean, there are other problems, we think, with the Kafka's functioning, which is the way in which they um, are deaf to the complaints of, of, of um, men, above all men, although clearly some women, who are being accused of parental alienation. And at the moment, that's being largely dismissed as a, a ruse by domestic abusers to... Well, the, the domestic, anyone who says that is accused of being a domestic abuse alienator. Yes, well... Denier, sorry, denier. denier. The, yeah. the domestic abusers are just finding a kind of cover for their yeah. abuse and accusing their ex of parentally alienating the children. So, but I mean, there's no doubt that there is a problem here just as much as there's been a problem for women yeah. being pushed into Absolutely. continuing contact with their abusers. I think, I think we need to be clear that we can see it from both perspectives. What, and, and, so and what you're actually seeing is a failure by Kafkas and you know, the courts as a consequence because clearly well, judges they're, are they're accepting, accepting the evidence Absolutely. being presented to them. They're failing to uh, properly assess the problems that are coming for them and make a decent de and accurate risk assessment. Now, I've got a, I'm on a hobby horse about this, as, as you know, which is I think actually the task is probably impossible. For the courts. For the courts. Yeah. Because the courts do not have the resources in terms of time to do, risk, to do um, findings of fact, for example, uh, to get the expertise that they need. Well, they're being be told that they've got the expertise. The Kafkas officer is the expert. Yeah. And, and, and to save money and time, you stick to that. You don't bring in, you don't spend time trying to find a psychologist or a psychiatrist who could give you an opinion no. about the parent who's accused of abuse or alienating. And um, they, so they don't have the expertise, they don't have the time, and they don't have the money because paying somebody else or drawing out the proceedings to make them, to ask more questions... Mm. Uh, cost money mm. and so um, the, the family court simply isn't resourced to do the kind of analysis that's needed to ensure that th more cases are dealt with justly. Um, now the, the problem with that seems to me to be that if you accept that you can't do the job properly but you continue to do the job perhaps on the basis that you say well we've got to do our best well, you have to. You have to do the job, don't you? You're paid well, you, to do the job. You're paid to do the job and you do the job, but unfortunately you end up doing it, as I would say, brainlessly because you can't do it correctly. No. And if you're going to stay in the job and do a job badly, you have to park your conscience and your intelligence somewhere else. Uh, before you walk into court. Before you walk into court or mm. before you go to work because you can't draw intelligent, informed conclusions. Mm. You have to draw some conclusions because people are demanding that you give evidence and that's your job to give evidence so you give some opinions and of course it's a free-for-all for anybody who's carrying a load of prejudices which makes it easier for them to jump to conclusions without evidence um, because they've got all the proof they need in their own head and they don't need evidence <laughs> for that um, mm. I, and I would have thought that it's a situation that drives out the good people because actually it's intolerable to be in a to be in a job where you're not resourced to do the job properly. And it's a high-risk job. I mean, you're dealing with people's lives. You're dealing with children's lives and the lives of parents and grandparents. And so it would be an some appalling of whom, situation some of whom for are having conscientious their, people. And some of, of whom are having their lives ruined. Yeah, absolutely, but, you know, absolutely. Children as well as parents. So any conscientious, thoughtful person put into a situation where you, you know you haven't got the resources mm. in terms of expertise, time or money to do the job properly will presumably rush for the exit. Mm. And that means you're left with people who aren't as conscientious or who have some other reason for being there because their agenda is uh, being met by the organisation. Mm. Uh, and if your agenda is... Um, well, if your agenda is... is I'm not going to say any more than this. It's, it's you know going to get into uh, you're going to get into, into trouble, unnecessary deep water. But you know you can guess what people's agendas might be if mm. they want to stay doing a job which gives them power over mm. over families, uh, when in fact that power can't be exercised justly. I think it, I think what I'd like to say is that I think the history is quite important to this. So this is why you keep on about Norgrove and 
Norgrove started off this course where we were we were told that we had to do things quickly. We were told that it was best for the children if we did it quickly because delay is harmful. And better for the children not to have experts. Oh, well, that's the next thing, you know, that there, there weren't going to be the number of experts. Why were they necessary? It was costing too much. We were taking too long. And my impression, having done almost all public law cases for years, I was out of touch with private law. I'd done a little bit when I first started to do family law. I didn't know until we'd started helping some people, how difficult the private law cases had become, how complicated they were, how much expert intervention would be needed if you were actually ever going to get to the heart of the problem, um, and if you could get to the heart of the problem, potentially have some, uh, at least an attempt at trying to get the, a good outcome, better outcome for the children. Um, that, that is what private law cases deserve. And in fact, with, pri with public law, we were stopped. Private law cases seem to be able now to go on forever, you, you know, and that, that's not, people yes. don't seem to be questioning yeah. that. We seem to have reversed that so that, you know, the public law cases are yeah. completely channeled through court, you know, very quickly. The private law ones linger. But the way it's, the way it's looking to me is that the, the, the family court is not a good forum, no, given that it's not adequately resourced. Mm to try and resolve some of these problems. There may be some... Well, I'm thinking, I'm meaning what's the, what has happened has resulted in it, the private law cases, you can't, you can't resolve them because there isn't the, 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 you know, the proper resources, they're, they're not available. Um, you can spend a long time, but you seem to spend a long time doing ridiculous things. And if you do get to a final hearing where a decision is made, even if it's a, a, a good decision with a proper appraisal of the risks, Families are left with each other, yeah. able to continue to bring the case back to court, yeah. start a new set of allegations or a new set of applications. Try to change the outcome. You can't escape from it. There's no um, breaks on people if they choose to abuse the system. And I think what we need to be talking about is not so much how awful it all is, which is, you know, it's, and it's, it's awful. kind of interesting it to talk awful. about how awful it is. And it's worth being honest about how awful it is, which is a debate which is happening. Yeah. But the question really is, what do you do about it? And how do you, I mean, is it, are people really going to argue that it's got to be resourced in order to do the job properly? Because actually that's a hopeless argument, just certainly at the moment when the government's spent out yeah. and there's not going to be increases in public spending of this sort. It's not going to be resourced better. So we're very interested in thinking about alternatives to the family court as a way of resolving the kinds of issues that we can see at the moment the court's failing to deal with. So, And anyone who goes to court now in these situations, I think, is um, playing with fire, really. I know a lot of people will say, well, we've got to, and yes, I accept that. But it is. it, is, it seems to me that you're walking to, into an arena where logic and judgment and um, proper consideration goes out of the window, and it's just that you're on this conveyor belt, and you will certainly come out the other end with something, but it may not be what you want, and it may well, not be Well, even if it's right. a short-term victory, yeah. you have very often trampled on the other person's personality, self-respect, uh, connection with the children, loyalty to the family, in such a way that for the rest of your life you're paying a price for it. Yeah. So it's an immensely damaging process done badly. It's probably highly risky, done well, but very damaging, done badly. Um, and my prediction for some men who have these problems, and I am not saying that there is no domestic violence, let's be clear about that. I'm sh absolutely there is, of course, and there are cases where there should be no contact between um, a an abusive parent and children. Absolutely, definitely, that I believe in. But... Um, there are other cases where I think you will find that or we will be hearing about over the next few years where families have been abandoned by fathers because the fathers can't stand it. Yeah. They would rather walk away. Yeah. And we are hearing people would start to tell, tell us that. There's, they're thinking of walking away rather than thinking of living through a prospect of having however many years it is of involvement with the children, but behind the scenes, the other person who is going to be 
repeatedly trying to undermine that relationship and, and how it proceeds. Yes, there's always a reaction. Yeah. That if if circumstances develop in such a way that as it in fact half the population, that is if if men are feeling badly done by, yeah, the pendulum will swing the other mm. way. Um, obviously it's not half the people in the family court, but if you if you upset enough whether it's men or whether it's women, and people have the freedom to choose how they then behave, mm. uh, you get a reaction. So you're building up potential trouble. And to end and to be clear, we have no allegiance with men or women. The case is, indiv each individual case needs to be looked at in its own context and you reach a judgment. Yes, it's on absurd that case. to take a position that either only men or only women or even mainly men and mainly women are victims of yeah. bad management in the family court Just is absurd. Forget about that. Look at each case individually and approach it to find the best outcome.